Hey y'all, this is Chris with DFW Airstream and we're going to go over the HVAC control for all of Airstream travel trailers that use the ducted air conditioning. Uh, the Bambis and the Vans and the Classic, those controls are going to be a little different and we'll address those in a different video. Alright, so when the HVAC controller is dark, the first press of any of the buttons is simply going to turn the backlight on. So you folks will end up pressing the buttons twice in a lot of cases. We're going to press the power button here, we're going to turn the backlight on, and then we're going to press it again to get the unit powered. Zone 1 is typically going to be the bedroom unit. Zone 2 will usually be the unit in the rear of the air conditioner. We're going to use the mode button, and the first option we're going to have is the air conditioner. Now, I do want to mention that these air conditioners don't fire up immediately. It takes just a few minutes. You'll see a little hourglass pop up. The fan's going to come on first, and then once the compressor kicks in, the hourglass will disappear, and that's usually within about 30 seconds of the fan itself coming on. All right, the fan just came on right there. We're still waiting on the compressor to kick in. All right, now if you look down here, you'll see a little fan symbol, and it says auto. That is the fan speed control, and there are three speeds. You have low, medium, and high. I do recommend you leave it in auto as the default, so that way when you turn the control panel on, the fan doesn't come on immediately. And I also want to mention that the speeds don't change immediately, so be patient with it. Now, by mode, we're going to have another auto across the top. The auto across the top is going to automatically switch between the air conditioner and the heat pump, depending on your ambient temperature and what you've got the target temperature on the control panel set for. By mode, the next option will be the heat pump. The heat pump is your electric heat, so you must be plugged into your shore surface to get it to work, just like the air conditioner. It does make a little squishy sound as it switches back and forth from the air conditioner to the heat pump, so you can listen for that. And I also want to mention that the heat pump is only going to work at 100% efficiency down to about 50 degrees ambient temperature. After that, you're going to want to switch over to the propane furnace. The propane furnace is powered through zone two. So on zone one, after the heat pump, we have a fan only option and then off. But on your 50 amp service trailers, you'll use the zone button to switch to the other zone and they can be fired up simultaneously. So if we switch back and forth here, you'll see that both zones are powered on the single air conditioning units the zone button doesn't do anything but you can use it to force the overhead fan off when switching from one of the speeds back to auto so once we get the compressor going on zone two i'll switch back over to zone one and we'll shut that one down all right so switching back to zone one cycle all the way through to off and then as we press the zone button it's going to force that overhead fan off Zone two is gonna have the same options. So we have the air conditioner first and then the auto between the AC and the heat pump. The heat pump is next. And then on zone two after the heat pump is where you'll find the propane furnace. The furnace is gonna disable the overhead unit and it will come on down below separately. They are two separate units. And even though the furnace is powered through the same control panel as the air conditioner and the heat pumps, the furnace is gonna work when you're boondocking and it will run off of just the batteries. Whereas the air conditioners and the heat pumps will will require you to plug into a minimum of a 30 amp service. A 30 amp service will allow you to use one air conditioner even on a 50 amp trailer and it'll simply be whichever air conditioner you turn on first. If you've already got one air conditioner running and you tried to turn the other one on on a 30 amp service, it's going to act like it wants to come on, it simply never will. And of course a 30 amp service is all you need to run the single air conditioning units, but you want to try to pick a 50 amp unit, 50 amp service if you have a 50 amp unit especially in the summertime, if you want to be able to run both air conditioners. Back to the furnace, I do want to mention the furnace does not light immediately, but it is propane fired, so you need to make sure that you've got at least one of your propane bottles open. It takes about 10 seconds before it lights. Once it's lit, you can use the overhead fan if you're plugged into the shore surface by selecting a speed, and that'll draw the furnace there up into the ducting and help redistribute it throughout the trailer. After you shut this off, and I do want you to cycle through to off on both zones before you turn the control panel off, you'll notice that the furnace continues to run for two minutes. Please do not depower the trailer during that time. It is just blowing regular temperature air through the ducting to make sure there's not any hot spots. And I want you to make sure that both zones are off before you turn the control panel off, so that way when you turn the control panel back on, it doesn't accidentally come on to whatever you had been using previously. We also have the inside temperature button here. 
You have your Fahrenheit Celsius button, temperature up and down. There is a clock and it has two programmable cycles. Remember your fan speed control, the modes, the zone button, and of course your power button. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions or have any recommendations on content you'd like to see, make sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. If you enjoy our content, give us a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks again from Airstream DFW.